we have a lot of equestrian subdivisions you know, in my area, and these horses lived at home at their at the facility that was owned by the family. Uh, it was a, a husband and wife and their three sons, and the the two of the boys were interested in in the race horses, so they had a a barn that would hold about 20 horses that behind their house. Um, this horse was a two-year-old, coming three-year-old, uh, and he had had a, a lecronon fracture, and so he had gone to, and had surgery and had a plate put in that uh, left front limb. Um, so when the horse became ill and started out just with ain't doing right, didn't want to eat, seemed a little depressed, this kind of thing, um, they figured that maybe he, you know, had some infection from that plate or, you know, the surgery had been fairly recent. Uh, when this horse came into that barn and I had asked the mother who was kind of in charge of, of that part of it, uh, what vaccinations the horse had had and she told me, well, he's had everything. I was a young practitioner and I didn't ask, what is everything? So looking back on it, I think that's really important and now, in the future, I always ask, what specifically have they had? Who administered them? And can I, may I get, call that veterinarian and get a copy of it? So this horse came in. Uh, he had gone and had the surgery. And for a couple of days, he just didn't really want to eat as well as he should have. And he was just a little bit depressed. It, he never really showed any neurological symptoms until the very, very end. Um, so they called me out to come look at him. I came out and looked at him in the morning, and I thought, you know, is he colicky? Um, you know, you try to figure out why he doesn't want to eat and what's wrong with him. So did I play around in his mouth? You betcha. You know, did a good oral exam and rinsed his mouth out and the whole nine yards. I talked to them and told them if he doesn't improve, um, then I need to come back and look at him. So I came back later on that evening uh, after, late afternoon, early evening to look at him. And he was, had a very mild fever. Um, again, really wasn't showing any neurological symptoms, just kind of depressed. And at that point, he really was had become adverse to drinking. Uh, didn't like to be touched. And so back in the back of my brain, I could remember Joe, Dr. Joe Joyce, who was a clinician when I was a student, that told me, if it looks like everything, yet nothing, think rabies. So that's when I started kind of clicking. I started thinking, is it this? No. Is it that? No. And I started thinking, hmm. So I talked to them and I said, look, this horse may very well have rabies. I'm very concerned about him having rabies. I think we need to refer him to A&M. I called the clinic. They agreed. And in within that amount of time it took to wrestle up a trailer, so about an hour and a half, <clears throat> this horse started having laryngeal spasms, uh, and they make a noise like no other noise you've ever heard. And the horse started becoming somewhat aggressive and, and hyper excitable and making this laryngeal spasms. We got him loaded in the trailer, no problem. Um, the two brothers were taking the horse to A&M, and they made it about 30 miles and called me on the phone and said, we think we heard, you know, the trailer started banging and this, that, and the other thing, and we think he's dead because it's quiet now. So they brought the horse back. I met him at their ranch. Opened the door, looked inside. And, I mean, there were this horse tore the inside of that trailer up. There were footprints on the ceiling. So when they were talking about seizural activity, I mean, this horse flat tore that trailer apart. And <clears throat> I just turned him around and said, off you go to the diagnostic lab. Called them the people that were on necropsy, and told him I thought I had a rabies case. It took about five days for us to get, because of the holidays, about five days. And the only, the biggest issue I think we had with the whole thing is that the mother, much to my chagrin, allowed two of the boys to go on a ski trip in Vail. So by the time we got the results that it was positive, they had to figure out a way to come home to get vaccinated. I think the hardest thing for me was dealing with the mother after we found out the horse had rabies. She was uh, like a serious mama bear. She had these three boys that had all been exposed to rabies. She was just, um, it, it's an emotional issue. 
And so trying to use logic in an emotional situation is sometimes tough. And so you do the very best you can, but I'd prefer just not to have to do it again. Yeah, the whole thing changes. Once they know that that horse has rabies and it's terminal, it's terminal. Maybe that you don't see it that much, but I mean, I just think it's, it's silly. If you can vaccinate for something, why wouldn't you? It's zoonotic. You can get it, and it's terminal, and the horses generally don't look like they have rabies, and they expose a bunch of people. All you need is one.